So hello everybody and welcome to the Lake District National Park. I'm currently at a place called White Moss and that sits between the two lakes of Rydal Water and Grasmere. Now the forecast today were for it to stop raining round about 10 o'clock. I got here at 9 and it's done nothing but absolutely tip it down ever since I arrived. It's now 1 o'clock and I've just got out of the car. I actually spent the whole morning drinking coffee, sitting watching the rainfall on the windscreen. But as I say, it's stopped now so I can get out and try and get some images. Conditions are very difficult, as you can see, middle of winter, everything is pretty much dead wherever you look. But I'm convinced there's something to be had. I think if you look hard enough, you'll find something. I've got a good range of lenses. I've got the equivalent of a 16 to 35, a 35 to 85, and an 85 to 160. I've also got a macro lens, so whatever presents itself, I should be able to deal with it. I've just got to find it. So some of you, I think, I'm sure, will think I've gone absolutely mad when I show you what I've just come across as a potential image. Literally an upturned tree. And within the roots of the upturned tree is a boulder. And when I'm looking for images, I look for concepts, I look for messages that help tell a story. And they go beyond just the usual visual representation of, of a subject. And that stone to me represents an item that's trapped. It's a very strong message, especially in today's society. So that's my first composition. So we're all set up and ready to go. I've got 100mm macro attached to the camera and a case filter system with a polarizer on, just dialed in to take any reflected surfaces of any raindrops that's penetrated through the tree roots. I've actually used that camera to frame it up initially to save me getting this one out. I like the crop of that camera, it's a 16 by 9 crop. This is a 4 by 3 I'll probably take that down in post-processing. One other thing that I'll probably do is I'll use a vignette um, or a radial filter in post-processing just to direct your attention to the focal point which is the stone that's trapped within the tree roots. So here we go, F16, 5 second exposure. Two second timer and I'll put that on now. behind me, a tree that split at the base drew my attention because you hear a nut hatch in the tree above me. Yeah, the, um, the tree just there covered in moss drew my attention as being a really nice image. And just to the right, I think you might be able to see it around about there, there's two red deer. And what you can't see that ran in front of those as I said that was a red squirrel. But the deer blending in to the background waiting for my next move no doubt to see if I come closer at which point they'll bolt. Now because they're there I'm not going to investigate that tree any further. I'll, I'll walk off and leave them be. It's obviously where they like to be during the daytime when there's lots of people about. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> So I haven't been walking long when I came across this potential image here. I'm not 100% sure whether it will translate onto the finished product, but it really appeals to me. All we've got is a fallen log and it's completely covered in feather mosses. 
Feather mosses really like the wet, damp environments, such as what you get in the Lake District. They really thrive in places like this. What I've used as my composition, you've got one or two fronds, to maybe even two or three fronds, that are swirling round just to draw your eye into the central portion of the frame. I really like it. I've got the camera aimed vertically down with a 100mm macro. It's on f16, it's on a two second timer, and there we go, very, very simple composition. I'll put that on now. It's worth keeping your eye out at all times. It's so easy to walk past tiny little bits of detail. The wall that I've just walked along, although I didn't find anything this time, is just full of these feather mosses and there's liverworts and uh, spleenwort ferns growing in amongst them but I just couldn't find a clean composition but you know you've just got to keep, keep looking and don't just walk past these things, it's all too easy just keep going with your head down assuming there's nothing around you that was a really interesting wall but uh, nothing on this occasion so the footpath that runs alongside the river uh, it's been very easy to be uh, focused on the river and not looking off what might be happening to the other side we're naturally drawn to water courses but just over here and I'm not sure if it'll work if there's any scene in it or not but from the footpath over here to all the squelchy grasses right over there is a fallen tree and that's got some potential I'm sure but perhaps not today in these calm clear conditions that we've got now I think atmospheric conditions always lends itself to old gnarly trees like that but I'm going to go and have a look anyway and maybe scope it out for a better day it's a lovely character Really nice, this is the sort of thing we need to be keeping our eye open for. Really old, characterful tree, just sitting with all these twisty branches, just begging to be photographed. I just don't think it's right for today, but um, potentially one to come back to in the right conditions. So I'm losing the light quite a lot now, but I've found what I consider to be a really nice shot and this is the common polypody fern and what is nice about it is, is that you normally find it in the tops of trees so to find it this low down is really quite unusual but what's what's really nice about it is it's growing in a little cleft in the rock there and it's got this nice little overhang but even better still it's growing in a group of three main fronds and groups of threes are always really powerful in photography and what I really like about this is you've got two older fronds just making up the bottom part of the frame complemented by the third younger frond that's curling around on the top so a very very dynamic composition and I just like the, the cleft of the rock just forming the top part of the frame I'm on a vertical composition I'm on f22 because I want to try and stop down as much as possible I've got 100mm macro lens in um, so it's important to try and get as much of the information sharp as possible and at this focal range, this distance from the front element to the subject is quite a big ask. I don't really want to focus stack because the fern's blowing around and I want to try and get it in one take. So I've got the case polarizer on as well, which is adding to my problems, but this little fern at the top here is catching the light and the problem with that is I need to reduce that reflection on the surface of it. So the polarizer's dialed in. I want to take the image now. But really quite a nice shot. I'll put that on now. So 
So that just about wraps this film up. It's time for me to head back. If you've enjoyed the film, as always, don't forget to subscribe and uh, ring the bell for those notifications if you haven't already done so. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the images. Always good to get that feedback. So I'll leave it there and say until next time, bye for now.